with the forehead. And I kind of just take a look at the reference or the model and just see. I mean, basically, I start with a with a mid middle kind of like mixture of of a flesh tone. So I'll take burnt sienna and a lot of white. And this model is uh, yeah. So I want to get like a. This is a Caucasian, fair-skinned model, so I kind of want to add more white to this. Um, but burnt sienna, I recently figured this out because I was I was mixing, you know, red, yellow, and blue, and white to to get flesh tones, and this is a great way to kind of, at least for the underpainting, to get to get that base base color pretty pretty quickly especially for caucasian skin and sometimes I, I like look at my skin because i'm somewhat fair skinned so that looks pretty good i want to i want to kind of go for like a mid-tone And then the, I toned this, this canvas with um, ivory black, just a wash. Um, and that kind of like neutralizes it in a way and it gets rid of the stark white. So instead of having, I used to work on like a warm background and that really kind of threw off the colors for, uh, for flesh especially. So. A lot of the skin ended up looking way too like red and orange because of everything's relative to that warm background. So I find ivory black to be a nice just neutral. So if you look look at that, that looks pretty good. Basically what I like to do is have variations of red of like a warm a warm pinkish red and then a yellow um, and we'll create a value range of those so I'll cut this in half and we're going to take some yellow ochre and mix it into this I'm not like too concerned about getting like super accurate with the colors. This is because this is the first layer. Um, it's just going to be our first impression of, of the skin tone and almost like there's going to be patchwork of colors. Like we're just going to kind of take notes on the face and put place colors in certain areas, but not taking it to much of a finish. Just basically setting us up for the next layer. So now I've got like a red, like a warmer, like a red and a more of a yellow tint. And then we'll take, take one of these, move it over here. One over here. I'm gonna add white. A lot more white.
So basically what I'm doing is start with the mid-tone, go to the light, and then we'll get the high we'll get the light mass, the highlight in there, and then I'll do I'll do the shadow. And I always like to bring a lot more paint into the lighter areas of the painting, uh, like build up the texture, more of the impasto in the lights and keep the shadows more translucent. So I found working up towards the light, I can just keep adding more paint and then, and then I can take, when I work on, when I mix the shadows, I can kind of be a little bit more uh, transparent with them, Le less paint basically. Because when I'm working, I'm I'm not really like thinking about the mixtures so much. I'm just kind of like going towards them. And when there's less paint, it just it works with the way I with I, the way I work. If there's less paint in the puddle mixture. I'll put less paint down. Could even use a little bit more. So that'll be. Usually for the light, this is a cool light, so adding white always cools things off anyway, but I'm not going to worry about the, the red and the yellow mixture at this point. I'm just going to kind of mix a, a combination of the both with lots of white. And that will be good enough for this first layer. Okay, so we've, we're getting a little bit of a value range going here. From the mid-tones to the lights to the, the light mass. Um, and now for the shadow. I'm thinking I'm gonna go with a little bit of cobalt blue. A little bit of the burnt sienna. And that's gonna be pretty dark, so we'll probably go up a value step. That'll be the darkest dark of the shadow, and it might not even be that dark. But it's good to have a range of values. Another thing to point out too is that these mixtures are not necessarily what we're going to be using they're they're more of a base for the flesh but as you see as we go on i'm going to be having side mixtures with my brush because uh, i need to add I need, I need to cool it off or warm it up or bring a different color into the mixture but but to have this base is really helpful to just put down and then react to it so, do that. And then I'll, I'll just take a little bit of this. That might be too much. Yep, too much. So, we'll take some more of this. And also with the shadows, I'm thinking about 
not so much at this point, but, but sometimes thinking about the background and wanting to incorporate the environment that the model's in into the shadow areas, because that's kind of, especially when you work from life, you see that a lot. Um, shadows, I've been told shadows are like mirrors for color. They, they kind of take in whatever is around uh, the environment. So I like to just stick with that principle, even if you don't see it in the reference photo. And that's looking, this next mixture is looking way too gray. So we'll just warm it up a little bit. this puddle but it's good to have it there all right now I'm going to take cobalt blue and take a little I'm going to go I'm going to take a sec section of each puddle I have here and take cobalt blue and mix mix it into each one of these and what that does is basically we're creating a warm value range and then it will have a cooler value range of colors which with this skin it's going to almost neutralize it in a way because when you add blue to like an orangey pink it's going to turn gray because um, it's kind of like the complement so but that's okay because just to have have neutrals in the skin is what makes it uh, convincing but also warm and cool mixtures as well. So for the underpainting, we're, we'll stick with a little bit more neutral and then the next layer will get a little bit more specific with the colors. And it's also going to darken each puddle a little bit, which is totally fine. Um, and we'll adjust that as we paint. But like I said, these are just base, base layers. That's too much blue. But we'll leave it. it might come in handy. That's, that's a nice color. It's like a neutral and com relative to the, the uh, color above it, it's, it would really work nicely uh, for flesh tone, in my opinion. main point of this is to just have variants of warm and cool and neutral so don't fuss too much over getting it 
if you add too much blue, basically, that's okay. Because we just, as long as it, there's a, I did it again. <laughs> as long as there's a derivative of the color above it in the mixture, um, you can always take more of the mixture and add to it. Um, but it's just nice to, it's nice to have the warms and cools. And we're gonna, that's too blue. That's the other thing about flesh is it, it reflects the environment and the light around it, but really it's, it's pretty gray and it's not as chromatic as um, people think. I used to make flesh tones uh, a little too gray and then, and then I went the other way and made them too chromatic and then now I'm like trying to find the middle ground so it's but that's 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 preference too you know that's just that's more naturalism that's more basically if you're painting what you see uh, all right so I think that's a good that's a good range of values for this for the flesh uh, and a good range of warm and cool